So the official points have been released for the Chaos Space Marines, and quite a few things have gone down in cost. Let's talk about what's changed for the forces of the Dark Gods. Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, where today we're talking Chaos once more. And for this video I thought we'd do an overview of all the things that have changed in the new digital points update for the faction. With codex releases in 40k 10th edition, Games Workshop has decided to keep the official points digital, so the printed points section in the book is always kind of redundant, though sometimes can give some good clues to things like enhancements. It's meant that each time a codex book comes out, we get a period where we know the rules but we don't know the final points cost, so everything is always a little bit up in the air until we know if certain interesting units have either gone up or down in points. Today though we get some answers, the new points have gone live in the Warhammer 40k app, and expect them to follow in the proper digital download in the not too distant future. Though we do have the precedent of things like the tower points going live on the app first, and everything tallied up perfectly. So these will be the new points cost for Chaos Space Marines going forward. I think as it goes it's broadly good news for the forces of Chaos. Their codex rules do have a few fun interesting ways to play, and people were at least cautiously optimistic about the codex already. And then for these points updates, the vast majority of things stayed the same. And then anything that changed went down in cost, so it got buffed in the points. Though admittedly quite a few of those things that did get those points buffs also got paired with nerfs and rules, usually toning down in their data sheet abilities, and then accordingly seem to have got points cut to compensate for that. In any case, plenty of interesting stuff, so let's talk through the changes and what it might mean for the Chaos Space Marines going forward. First up, let's talk through some infantry units and bikers. We're certainly starting out on a positive note, as the standard battle line legionaries for 80 points remained unchanged from that very low points cost that they got in the last points update. These guys are still absolutely stand out great, two power fist equivalents per five man squad, a big heavy weapon, and some nasty rerolls against enemies on objectives. These are just all round strong and feel like a unit that you could happily take quite a lot of in a list. Otherwise the elite chosen got a small cut down from 130 points to 125, nice to see a drop there. It did feel like the dialer maybe swung a bit too far the other way from when they were kind of overpowered in early 10th. I feel like they'll remain playable at 125. Havocs are 120 points and unchanged. Pretty reasonable heavy weapon infantry will be competing against the tanks. Terminators are 185 and unchanged, and as are Noise Marines for the Emperor's Children at 85. Possessed got a small points cut, dropping down from 130 to 125 like the Chosen. I thought they were looking quite good at the 130 points before, but unfortunately Games Workshop took the devastating wounds away from them that they could get all game long. Now they can only trigger that once per game when they have a dark pact, and it just makes them far less general purpose melee units with their strength 5 and damage 2. They're definitely good against some things, but far less good against tough stuff. Obliterators drop down a bit from 180 down to 170. I feel like that's helpful enough, but they did get their shorter melter range in the codex and also dropped down to units of 2. Between those two, I'm still not feeling like they're particularly standout, even at the 170 point cost, though I guess it's a shift in the right direction for them. On the flip side, Chaos Space Marine bikers seem to be incredibly pushed for some reason. 70 points per unit of 3, down from 75. I thought even at 75 points they were looking like a very, very interesting unit. They're really quite fast, pretty tough, and quite threatening. They can have multiple special weapons and a power fist on the sergeant and are also cheap enough to be kind of expendable trading units skirmishing over objectives. It's a bit of a shame the models are so old there. They've almost got to be on the agenda for being replaced next time Chaos Space Marines get a major update, and might make people a bit more apprehensive about acquiring any. Raptors are 85 points per 5, and they're unchanged. Not really too awful at that points cost, and they do have their jump pack lord, but they don't feel like one of the standout units. That would almost certainly fall to Warp Talons, 110 points per 5 and unchanged. They're the ones with the very blendy lightning claws that were already genuinely quite good anti-infantry melee units prior to the Codex update. In the Codex though they got that slightly crazy rule where if you destroy something in the fight phase and then are no longer in engagement range by the end of that phase, the squad can then go back into deep strike reserve. Potentially combining that with rapid ingress you could have a squad that repeatedly deletes enemy units and then gets near guaranteed charges on the next target provided the opponent doesn't have some special way of interacting with you, like overwatch or indirect fire, you basically can't really interact with a unit whatsoever, and at this point's cost I feel like they'll still remain borderline broken in the hands of a good player, but can pick their appropriate targets well. Moving on, next we've got the damned keyword units, and I thought I'd cover spawn and the damned characters here as well. Cultists remain 50 points and are unchanged, I still think they're going to be there in competitive lists due to that sticky objectives type rule and just being nice cheap expendable cannon fodder. 
Unfortunately, they lost their special weapon access, but I still think they'll be a usable unit. Traitor Guardsmen are 70 points, and I still think that that's a bit too much over Cultists. They do have some advantages like OC2, better armor, and special weapons, but losing the sticky objectives and the extra points do sort of outweigh that, I think. The Felgor Beastmen got a drop, they went down from 95 points to 85. I still don't think that's probably going to be enough to actually make people want to take them very much. Their trick is a first turn arrival from Strategic Reserve, so I guess it could be a bit of a tax to get a squad into the midfield, but they just don't do all that much damage when they get there. Next up, and getting the single biggest cut of the points changes, are the Accursed Cultists. They drop all the way down from 105 points to 85. Really quite a significant drop of almost 20%, though I did think that Games Workshop with their previous nerfs had made them overcosted, and they weren't being played all that regularly. In the Codex, they swapped their Reviving Model special rule, which was quite a good one for a sort of surge move, which means that they could be jumping into close combat if you put units too close to them. I feel like dropping down to 85 points makes them genuinely kind of interesting again. They're still at least a somewhat tanky unit with a bunch of those big three wound torments and feel no pain type saves, and they do seem like they're the central unit for certain leader choices, and particularly the Chaos Cult detachment, even if that one's not really all that strong. Next up, Spawn of 70 points, and that's bad news for them, as their objective control zero, which was a big blow to them in the Codex changes. The Dark Commune is still 65 points, probably still worth it if you want a 20 mana cursed cultist unit for something big and fairly tanky in the midfield. The Traitor Enforcer is 65 points and unchanged, probably still not that great for the Traitor Guardsman, even if he can give you some free Overwatch now. And the new Cultist Firebrand with the big heavy flamer is just 45 points. It brings you some more shooting plus re-rolling leadership tests, which I guess could help with Dark Pats. I feel like for what he adds to the units, you're probably going to want the Dark Commune over him for the extra 20 points. They add more bodies to the units and give you two really quite strong buffing rules more than him. For vehicle units, the two Dinobots got some small points reductions. The Force Ring dropped down from the fairly princely 200 points to 190. Kind of nice on one of the scarier general purpose gun turrets that the Chaos Space Marines have to offer. I feel like that change is reasonable enough though, given that not everyone's going to be running packed bound anymore. And that was one of the things that pushed them towards being some of the strongest shooting units in the game. And not getting the boosted mark packed benefits if you fail the leadership test is a bit of a downside too. Perhaps the bigger winner though is the Morla Fiend, which took really quite a nice points drop down from 140 to 130. A nice 7% points drop there on a unit that I already would have rated as pretty usable. I guess the points cut there is to compensate for his loss of re-rolls. He could previously re-roll charge rolls and things, and that did reduce his threat range. More things feel really quite fun in the Vashtor Soulforge kind of detachment, potentially smashing straight through walls to get to their prey. They're definitely looking like an even more tempting choice than they were before now. Otherwise, Venom Crawlers are 110 points and unchanged. They put out a good amount of sort of heavy bolters style equivalent fire. Again, very nice indeed in the Vashtor detachment, and they're pretty good besides that. The Defile is still 190 points, probably a bit overcosted for the majority of detachments, I'd say, but again, better in Soulforged. The Helldrake is 205, which is still very overcosted, sadly. This thing needed a kind of monumental points cut to make it more relevant. Games Workshop still don't want flyers to be at any part of the optimized list. Finally, for the Demon Engines, the Corn Lord of Skulls remains at 450. Generally still quite a big threatening and efficient titanic vehicle, pretty massive with any stratagems or boost that can affect it, and as ever seems like a scary threat in Soulforge, where it gets some slightly obscene damage boosts. Otherwise, for the rest of the Chaos Vehicle Armoury, there weren't any points changes. Hellbrooks remain at that slightly cheaper cost of 130, still very nice for amping up your dark packs, though I feel like as not everyone's going to be running pack bound, that's probably a small nerf for them overall. They're just going to be a lot more relevant if you're getting the exploding hits on 5s, not 6s. Rhinos are 75 points and still seem absolutely great. I'm sure that they'll be staples rolling around the battlefield, delivering your legionaries or chosen with Chaos Lords. The Predator tanks both remain 130 points, really quite efficient shooting units. Probably the Destructor a bit more so than the Annihilator. That damage 3 and good AP is pretty good on the turret. Chaos Vindicators are still looking great, 175 points for a very threatening amount of shooting, I'm sure they'll still see some play. Could be nice in Renegade Raiders with advance and shoot and getting yet more AP against things on objectives. Pat Bound with Mark of Nurgle or in Vashtor's formation, maybe as a good target for Demonic Possession. And the Land Raiders 240 points and unchanged. It's pretty reliable for getting big scary Death Star style units into melee from long range. 
plus nice threatening las cannons to back it up. Could be particularly interesting in Renegade Raiders, as they've got a couple of things that have affinity with transports. Finally, the Noxalith Crown remains 125 points, again with the general trend of flyers and fortifications being nerfed out of competitive play. I know the Leadership Aura can have some effect at Dark Pact, but paying 125 points for a great big spiky thing that just gives you plus one leadership really is kind of spectacularly sad, even for a fortification. Then finally, we've got the Chaos characters. Probably one of the most notable changes here was the Chaos Lord dropping down. He went down from 95 points to 90. That definitely feels relevant, given that he was already pretty strong and plays in a lot of lists already. He just adds a fairly monstrous level of threats to either Legionaries or Chosen with his big once per game damage boost. It's really nice for that alone with his Demon Hammer, plus accessing battle tactics for free, which can have a bit more or less use depending on his detachment. Otherwise, the Terminator Lord is 95 points and unchanged, still reasonable enough if you're running Terminators in a big way, and the new Jump Lord is 90 points. I feel like he is probably going to be a bit more niche as it involves using Raptors as a bit more of a mainline threat and damage unit and probably building out to 10 of them. For the most part, they much more often tend to be used for fast interference type units. Otherwise, we've got the Dark Apostle at 75 points for his melee boost, the Master of Executions at 80 points and unchanged there as well, and the Warp Smith remains 70 points and unchanged, definitely going to be useful for putting those demon engines back together in the Vashtor detachment. For the Psychers, the Sorcerer is 60 points and unchanged, still probably going to be pretty niche at that kind of points cost. The Terminator Sorcerer is 90 points and remains the same as well. He has the nice AP debuff that you can throw at enemy units. That rule itself is very, very nice, but it does involve committing to a host Sorcerer and likely a Terminator squad as well, and that does take the edge off a bit. And then for the Psychers, the Master of Possession drops down to 70 points from 80, a reasonably big relative points decrease there, but I still don't think it really compensates for the fact that he lost his most reliable boost. That 6 plus feel no pain for the possessed was really helpful, and without it he just feels far more peripheral and passable. Finally, for the bigger and chunkier generic characters, the Lord Discordant remains 190 points, really not sure why he's not had some sort of help, he was clearly overcosted before, and he remains so now. And otherwise, the Demon Prince and the Wings Demon Prince both remain the same, 165 for the one and 180 for the other. In the right army with the right enhancements, they can be interesting. I say usable, but perhaps not enormously crazily stand out. Finally, for the epic heroes, we've got Abaddon the Despoiler, 295 points, so dropped a bit down from 310. A small boost there, though he did pay for that in terms of nerfs on his data sheet a bit, unfortunately. He doesn't generate command points on his dark paths quite as easily. His invulnerable save can't be used to help out cultists and things, and he also lost access to the Chaos Deity keywords, which is only really relevant in pack bound, but it does mean that his dark packs aren't quite as strong there. I still think he's interesting as a big centerpiece for some massive rerolls for a whole bunch of Chaos units around him, and can certainly destroy most things that he gets near. But I feel like he's probably a bit worse overall than pre-codex, even with this small points cut. Otherwise, the rest of the epic heroes haven't changed. Cypher's still fun at 90 points and gets a lot more damage in the codex. Now he can use those pistols at range and then also in melee. Pretty scary to have a lone operative that can just flat out erase entire squads of lighter infantry or space marines at once. Fabius Biles, 85 points and unchanged. So is Harkon, World Claimer and Huron Blackheart. Lucius the Eternal for the Emperor's Children remains 95. And finally, Vashtor the Archifane is 190 points and unchanged. He certainly got a pretty massive glow up with that big strength 14 hammer. Nice to see him genuinely looking kind of strong now. Overall, as far as the points updates go, I feel like Chaos really haven't done too badly out of this one. Nothing went up, a lot of things went down by quite a bit, including some units that I would have considered really quite solid already. Things like the Chaos Bikers, the Mauler Fiend and the Chaos Lord, all of those will help quite a lot. A fair bunch of the others I think help out things that got nerfed in the codex that sort of needed a bit of help and remain good changes even if they're probably not going to always push their units to the absolute top of a competitive play. It's going to be fun to see what sort of competitive lists come out of these points costs and the chaos detachments though. I'll certainly look forward to covering those on the channel when we start getting a bit of tournament data out. In any case, let me know what you make of the changes. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I do tend to post new 40k videos most days. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, 
regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.